Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 448. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk some professional wrestling. Uh, with me, joining me, talking some wrestling, it's Papa Lunchbox at DJ Lunchbox at Panel Riot. How you doing, sir? Hey guys, that's true. It's been a very busy day for Panel Riot. We recorded a new episode. We launched a Facebook group, which you can find at facebook.com slash group slash Panel Riot. Uh, Go and join it today. And he looks like a madman. A little bit. Very and I look like a madman, yes, uh, because I came home and immediately started recording, uh, so I didn't have time to uh, uh, change my clothes. And everything else is an audio podcast, so there you go. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Um, also with us from Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie, New York, is Mad Mike, the Toy Man. Hi, 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 everybody. Um, hi. So, so, so podcasts are in the news this week, huh? Hey guys, why, why, why didn't Vince have us on the network, huh? I helped build that shit. What the fuck, Vince? Okay. Uh, all right, okay. all right. Positive, positive. You're positive. the perfect person to talk about former employees of WWE. Uh, also with <laughs> us from Johnstown, PA. It was his birthday yesterday, a very <gasps> positive birthday. It's Bobby F. J-Town. It was my birthday yesterday, and we all had fun watching Raw because we were positive about it, and we did calisthenics. What? And you I did? don't know. <laughs> And we tested Eamon on what Olympians he knows yeah, and doesn't yeah. know. Yeah, that was spoiler I don't know why alert. We did he that. knows none of them. I, I don't. I we learned. Don't we learned Dominic Mucciani was the harbinger of boners. Uh, holy <laughs> shit! How was your birthday, Bobby? Did you have a good it birthday? It was great. It was great. I had a burger that was made of bacon. All right. And as a fat guy, that is pleasing. <laughs> I think as a, a living human, that is pleasing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As a as a fellow fat guy. I second. Yeah. Yes. Good stuff. I, uh, oh, okay. Um, I, and leading the way for us is Sorgatron. Say I, hello, Sorgatron. Hi, I already introduced myself. Uh, Fucking, this is... you can find Sorg at SorgatronMedia.com and, of course, on every single podcast this evening because yeah. he is our lord and master of podcasts, just as SorgatronMedia.com is your trusted source. For quality podcasting Masters. every week. Well, Master of Ceremonies and Puppets. I mean, quality-ish. <laughs> no, that's got to be the new catchphrase. It is? I think I pitched it on Panel Riot, and I can't remember if I left that clip in or not. <laughs> and I, said, I said specifically that I was going to pitch to you that be your new catchphrase. Oh, okay your, then. Your trusted source. Trusted source for quality podcasting. Yeah. If you say it enough time, people will believe it. That's adamant. trusted source and puppet. <laughs> guys. Like I said, it's a Wrestling Man Show. You can find out more about us over in the other shows, many other shows we do for wrestling at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Yeah, trusted source. You can uh, look up Wrestling Mayhem Show and subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio, and YouTube video and audio formats. You can also drop us a line to that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Yeah. I just got weirded out looking at myself in the monitor. Oh, um, yes. A little bit. Look at, he's out. looking at me. Weird he's looking out. at me. Uh, anyways, um, you can drop us a line also to the hot, may, hot, hot line at 412-206-WMS0. Woo! I, no, we're not at that point yet. Uh, you can also uh, uh, please join us here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com about 9 p.m. Woo! Eastern time. Nope. Okay. Nope. No, not yet. Not yet? No, that's not, that's not right either. Um, and you can also Woo! support us on patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show like our friends at the wrestling revolution.com and Bo Diggity. Woo! Woo! There it is, guys. Oh, 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 yeah. 
We missed it. There it is. Woo. There it Close is. We enough. Got it. So no, we got it. We first sort of all, it again. What? Uh, like Bo diggity. Wow! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> He's hurting himself. It smells great, and my cat's sleeping. Let's do this. <laughs> I don't have a cat. With uh, me. Okay. Oh, no, he's not asleep. I woke him up. Hey no. guys, it's con. Oh, jeez, the thing just popped up. Hey guys, it's contest time. We had a contest this past week for Thanksgiving. Uh, hashtag WMS Thanksgiving. Tell us what you were thankful for in pro wrestling. We had a couple of entries, and both of these guys will be accepting, uh, accepting, receiving RWA Salute the Troops too, involving Hurricane Shame Helms and uh, Sanjay Dutt in some great matches. Uh, Shane Douglas on there as well, emanating from California, PA, just last month for the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Uh, Okay, okay, you got to stop that. That's I'm weird. sorry. That's really weird. I'm my sorry. Head. I'm just so into it. <laughs> I'm really into what you're doing and saying. I'm thankful. Um, so I'm thankful one that, yeah. goes out to our friend at Power to the Smarks. Uh, I'm thankful for a lot in wrestling, including the Ashes of Shakara Pro film and Zane Steen and more in NXT. And also our friend at Buddy Landell at Landell3. Uh, uh, I'm thankful for... Uh, Mayhem Show and Sorgatron Media. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Yes, Trusted sucking up, source. Sucking Trusted. up will get you the prize. So those guys get that copy. Of RWA salute the troops too. They'll get the link here. Uh, we'll DM you guys as soon as we can. Uh, I'm thankful for out of the bird stuffing. Out of the bird stuffing has out of the to bird do with stuffing. Wrestling. You mean bread, Bobby? Yes, because bread. stuffing <laughs> has to be stuffed in something. I had a bad experience. The stuffing. What? What? What if, what if the stuffing is stuffed in into Bobby's mouth? I couldn't tell if the stuffing was meatloaf or if it was stuffing. Hmm. It was. It was pink. Uh, uh, okay. I've, okay. Have I said too much? Wrestling. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Uh, this week uh, we're going to do another contest. Like I said, we're going to do a weekly contest, guys. Um, yeah, I want rub you to use on a contest. The uh, hashtag WMS return on Twitter, and you're going to tell us who would you like to see come back to the WWE. Of course, we're talking about one guy, CM Punk, and him. That may never happen again for him, from the sounds of it. Uh, but uh, we'll be discussing that. That's kind of the theme of the week. So tell us who you would like, really like to see come back. Jesus, um, within reason, of course. <laughs> Tell us why <laughs> in 140 characters, God and you have a chance it. to win IWC's Best of CM Punk Volume One. Sorg, Sorg. Yes. Um, that sounds like a, that sounds like an amazing prize. I, I have I have one question for you. Can no, you are no, not. No. You do not, not qualify eligible. to win. God damn it! No. Can I win? Bobby, no. I already have it. I don't need to win. There you go. There you go. But thank you. He has it can, can I enter the Dan O'Brien into the contest? No. Uh, can he, he can win because he. But, but he's on the DVD. Yes. Yes. He is. Yes. Uh, he's on yes. the show now. Oh wait, no, no, he's not on the DVD. Uh, yeah, Daniel. Uh, uh, Christopher Daniels is on the DVD. Oh. Uh, that, that's even better. Um, uh, yes. we do have a question from the chat room. Okay. Tony Garza wants to know, can he use Facebook hashtags instead? You can, but they won't count because I won't be looking for them. <laughs> <laughs> what are Facebook hashtags? Uh, you, you can. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll try. I'll try. I can't promise anything on Facebook, uh, but I'll ge- do a general search for that. But Twitter has been the focus since they're better with hashtags typically. Um, so, And we want people to find us as well. So make sure you at Mayhem Show. Make sure you use the hashtag uh, WMS returns, and you have a chance to win the digital download. CM Punk back around the 2002-2003 area here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, he always mentions Pittsburgh on those DVDs. He's doing that whispering thing again. Take on yeah. guys. He's in a three-way three-way dance with guys like AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. A 30-man yes. Iron match with Christopher Daniels. Uh, IWC heavyweight title match with Colt Cabana. Uh, Jimmy Vegas, a local. Sterling James Keen. I think some of you may know him as Corey Graves came from the area. Chris Hero. I think he's doing something in the in So the wait, wait, Sorg, on this best of, CM Punk wrestles Bizarro CM Punk. Is that Chris yeah. Hero? That's Corey Graves, yeah. Oh, Corey Graves is? I yeah. thought Corey Graves was Bizarro Edge. I always thought Corey Graves was Bizarro CM Punk. You're incorrect. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> who's Bizarro Superman, though? 
uh, anyway, so, so, so go ahead and do that. But other than that, let's start off with our fan mail of the week. Fan mail. We got one. We got one, guys. Yeah. Yeah. WMS Universe. Uh, I'm not going to read it like that. <laughs> <laughs> what? You sound like Val Venus. <laughs> I thought it was more if, fun, Dongo. If you, put, if you put a little more gruff in it, I sound like Batman. What a week. <laughs> WMS <laughs> Returns. WMS Universe. WMS Batman Returns. Where's Harvey? <laughs> Where's Harvey Whippleman? What a week. <laughs> we got two <laughs> biggest, most yeah. interviews. In pro wrestling history in a matter of days. For the rest, I'm a little lightheaded from doing that <laughs> voice. Christian Bale. Swear to me. Uh, most of the, uh, a matter of days. For the wrestling podcasting community, it feels like we can't possibly go any higher. Question. Is there any interview left out there that can possibly top CM Punk or Vince McMahon? Um, Vince McMahon interviewing CM Punk. At this point, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, um, who's left? Dixie I'd Carter. actually like to hear Colt, Colt interview Vince McMahon. Just I think that him. would be a much different interview. <laughs> mm. what's, what's your deal? I don't know. We had Stone Cold last night saying, hey, why does your product suck? Why don't you listen to the fans? Yeah. <laughs> like, basically. Um, man, I... If, w- are we talking about for Colt Cabana as an interview or just an interview in general? Just an interview in general. Yeah, because we're talking about Vince and, and everything. Wow, who is somebody you would like to hear their thoughts? Disco Inferno. We've, Inferno. we've heard we've heard Bischoff. We've heard you Russo. Know what? Dixie Carter. We've heard enough. I was wondering Bischoff. about Dixie Carter because because what is her take on wrestling? Like I, I would I would love to hear that. Like Colt Cabana interviewing Dixie Carter. I it it wouldn't be as big as the Punker McMahon interviews. I would just be really curious to hear it. And it would just start with the first, the, with the question. Nope. Nope. Why? We're, we're overlooking someone important. Who? The Undertaker. Yeah. Oh okay. wow. Okay, yeah, that's that that that's absolutely true. Yeah. 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 That's correct. I've, I've been yep. I've been kind of hoping that he's going to retire soon, just so he can finally write his book. So or just or it. just a full. Like like a Shawn Michaels style documentary DVD, mm-hmm. like just a, like a a Heyman length Blu-ray about the career of the Undertaker. Oh, that'd be oh, amazing. Yeah. We just, you know he's got I'm, the I'm sure craziest it's in there. stories. I'm sure they've probably recorded a shit ton. Because mm-hmm. honestly, the only time he's ever really done that was the um, when he was the American Badass. They uh, he released a DVD. Yeah. Well, it's been encouraging because he's been more kind of like out of character recently, like the interviews for the Monday Night War series and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I think it's 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 moving in that direction. And he's always wearing the same hoodie. So I just wonder if, if they just had like a day long session. No, he's just he's real poor. <laughs> he only has that one hoodie. Got, he's got that one hoodie. I don't know why he dresses like a hobo when he's been to WrestleMania 21 times. <laughs> I don't get it. Because you know why? Because he can afford to dress like that. That's true. That's Sorry, true. It's not give a, a crap. It's because he's on a losing streak. That's gotta if, be uh, if I could afford to wear whatever I could, I would probably wear a uh, three-piece suit covered in dust. <laughs> what? Why? So you Colt also, Cabana you and Steve Austin deserve a ton of credit for their Wait. roles in all of this. Uh, both what? I was gonna say, would you also have a bindle? Of course, I'd have a bindle. Come on. Okay. Can't afford a bindle. <laughs> Did everybody answer? I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, both Colt Cabana and Steve Austin deserve a ton of credit for their roles in all of this. Both have different interview styles, but there's no doubt in my mind that no one else could have done a better job in either of those situations. Speaking specifically about Colt, is it time we recognize him as one of the most influential people in pro wrestling in the 21st century? A little indigestion. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. Looking back, his podcast was a game changer for the business. Tony Gar, let, let me just interject a minute here. Tony Garza has a good point. Shane McMahon would be a good interview too. Oh yeah, oh, right yeah. now. Yeah, Shane, Shane will be really good, especially after what Vince said last night, mm-hmm. uh, because he did talk about how uh, that that Vince left because he wanted to, and uh, how Vince was like, 
or, or Shane was working in the, uh, what do you say, in the um, merchandise factory, mm-hmm. not factory, plant, not plant, piece, warehouse. Um, didn't like it, didn't like what he was getting paid, so he went and got a job in construction. Yeah. Like and as made a, more money, like as a teenager or something, and how how he really respected that. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean that's that that that's really that's a really cool look at how they worked, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I have other thoughts, but they're not wrestling related. Uh, so, but no, now it'll be interesting to say like, why aren't you around, and what have you been doing? Mm-hmm. Like just yeah, to start, he, he did an interview where he was. Um, you know, open and honest and answered all the questions instead of like towing the company line. Yeah. Well, he's not part of the company, so that's true, but it's still a family. Yeah. Other than allegiance to the the family. Yeah. yeah. He's not really like, he really can't shit on the entire family. Like he really couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I would want to ask him how he aged, uh, 50 years (laughs) in five. (laughs) Um, and I think you, I think you just answer Kurt Angle, the big show. (laughs) <laughs> Kurt, like that, just Kurt Angle it. Kurt Angle suplexes through the uh, plate glass or whatever that was. Yes, God. I, I was th- I was in the arena for that show. That that's was my favorite watch. match of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to answer Matt's question, yes. One final question: <laughs> Did WWE pay off Eric Rowan's conquest of the Rubik's Cube too soon? Seriously, I feel like they should have saved it for a pre-match backstage segment at TLC. That's all I got this week. Have a great show. Your wrestling game show champion, Mainstream Matt. Uh, yeah, they should have uh, absolutely held on to that Rubik's Cube a little bit longer. I will it third was that. Cos- it was oh. his cosmic key. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but they found it and won a title. True. I- I'm just going to avoid making any more Dude Where's My Car references. We all appreciate it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> No idea yes, what you're talking about. We, still. None of us remember that movie. We want to. Yet we you all to. say Zoltan during the MLB season. I don't. Um, we uh, do I because don't. of the wrestler. And because baseball's boring as fuck. There's that too. That too. No offense to uh, you my all. baseball fans in the audience, including my parents, who are very nice people and enjoy baseball greatly. <laughs> and Matt Carlin's. Sorry. And Sorry. Matt Carlin's. Sorry, yes. Matt. Specifically Matt Carlin's. But really, fuck baseball. <laughs> But what of the LB, MLB, EBD, 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 EBD. Well, that's something different. That's a but. That's where a bunch of people get together and fuck. <laughs> they hit different kinds of home runs. Anyway, <laughs> what happens now? I don't know anymore. We, <laughs> we have a voicemail. We have a voicemail. Oh, we have a voicemail. But Sorg, I have a question for you. Okay. So we're, it's December, right? Right. Every year in December, I like to come into the studio, I like to drink a bottle of wine, and I like to shout at microphones. Could that be Petri wine? It's likely that this year it might actually be Petri wine. Okay. It might be a gift from Petri Claus. My question to you is, I'm of course going to get the drunk munchies. What on earth can I snack on in and around the Sorgatron Media? Well, I'll tell you what, that night's going to be very special because you'll be able to experience firsthand some slice on broadway from our friends on slice on broadway uh down the road here on broadway it's right over there they support this show with the gift of pizza yeah pizza and i don't know how well pizza goes with wine but i think they serve it there uh oh that's awesome the gift that I think so. Coming. They have beer, at least. They have like some crafts and stuff like that. There, there's, and pizza. And, and, and last I knew, their BYOB and their other location on Car, in Carnegie, PA, on Main Street. You can go check that out as well. Find out all locations, all the information at SliceOnBroadway.com. Look them up on Facebook, on, uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, and let them know, please, that the Wrestling Mayhem Show sent you. Yep. So we have an email. No, a voicemail. voicemail. I understand. Voicemail, yeah. And it's from somebody who's a Patreon supporter, which Woo! means Woo! we will all... I burped and then I wooed. Woo, <laughs> indeed. It's a boop. So, what? It's a boop. It's a boop. Boop. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> boop. So with boop, that, let's know. find uh, out isn't what... Isn't that a burp and a poop? Bo Diggity has to say. <laughs> Look here. A boop. A boop. Wow. 
her own boys having her children. Gathered her around, trying to tell you a story. A story of how I became the greatest father of all time. <laughs> My son now woos when I say, what does Rick Blair say? So, <laughs> fucking, I've got nice. fucking father pride right now. You can kiss my ass if you think that I'm a terrible dad. I will fight you with words, not with my fists, because I suck at fighting, probably. It's unbelievable. I'm, like, trying to teach him how to chop. It's not working. He cries too much. I'm not I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I have not hit my child. I've not chopped him. I have not done anything of the sort. Calm down. Uh, I watch Raw. Uh, mostly on mute, which is a hilarious way to watch Raw, by the way. If you don't watch Raw, watch Raw on mute sometime. Don't even unmute it for the promos. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it makes less <laughs> sense with no words. It makes sort of sense with words. Um, I, the, the, I, I don't get it. I really don't. Uh... I don't like the TLC build. Like, I like the fact that they're building for Ambrose and Wyatt. Oh, no. They will. And Stroud said, it's just like, the, I'm glad that there's only three weeks of build because it's only three weeks that they have to throw objects at each other that they're going to have around their match. <laughs> just, can we just, like, have, like, one person get hit with a chair and then just, like, roll that one for a while? Just roll the B footage, the B roll. That's, that's an <laughs> industry term. Look it up. Um, not to be confused with B-hole, just saying. So, anyways, this has been a uh, oh, fucking diggity. Oh, F diggity. I do it every time. It's, it's just tradition at this point. And uh, you're fucking welcome for my voice being heard. Watch Austin Cash, you fucks. Oh, oh wow. the F is for watch Austin Cash, you fucks. Fucks is the word there. The F, the F is for fucks. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah watch awesome cast this week uh awesomecast.net he was on there representing we talked a lot about um android tablets and google glass and and giant ipads wow giant. Oh. I, I would like to point out that i do watch raw on mute because i watch it with you guys pretty True. much yeah. yeah i i have a feeling that if you watch lucha underground on mute it would be the exact same show or you could watch it on Moon 2, which I did one time. <laughs> Same difference. I can't. I don't know Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Solid. Solid. Yeah. Nice. No, right. Good, good answer. Good answer. I don't know Spanish. So we did awesome. have a pretty big event. Hey guys, did you hear something might have happened on Thanksgiving? No. No. I Wait. ate turkey. I ate turkey. You had turkey. Um, I, I went to work. MST3K Turkey Day Marathon. Oh. It was amazing. And there was oh. a parade. It was oh. so good. And there was a dog show. They showed Puma Man. Uh, and Laser get Blast. I, I played Monopoly. Uh, okay. Uh, and, that's uh, not... I don't think... There, there was something else. There was something what else I understand. What else? Oh, uh, oh Santa! Oh, the magical Santa. world of Sinbad. That was the other one. They no, showed. no, that wasn't it either. No, I don't think that was it. I don't think that was what it was on uh, WrestleZone.com. Mm. Uh, no, no, no. The Jurassic World YouTube. trailer? No. Yeah. No. Oh, shit. Star Wars trailer. That, that one. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, CM Punk finally broke his silence. Oh. oh. <laughs> of course, uh, the Art of Wrestling Colt Cabana's podcast. Finally, his good buddy CM Punk, of course, a legitimate friend. I don't know. Could be a work. Could be. <laughs> could be a work. Could Their be a work. Friendship could be a work. No, no. It could like be. K-Fate, you don't know that. Sure. You don't know that. You don't know. You don't know, man. Um, could but, his marriage be a work? What's that? Could his, marriage, could his marriage also be a work? It could be. I don't know. <laughs> WWE, man. Um, but he broke his silence. He had a conversation with CM Punk to the point where he legitimately broke the freaking internet on Thanksgiving. Um, yeah. You cannot get, last I knew, you cannot get his audio cast, um, no, that episode, can't. on iTunes, on Stitcher. Uh, you have to find the YouTube that somebody uploaded uh, in order to listen to it, the two-hour audio podcast. Um, I did. I listened to it in bits and pieces here and there over like two or three days. 
uh, because it was two hours and I had a lot to do for Thanksgiving. Um, Great. <laughs> I, I listened to Great. it. I listened to the entire two hours before we started the show. Sork. Did you? Yes. No, you didn't. So yeah, that, yes, I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Well, as soon as I finished the movie, Matt, you said we were going to be talking about CM Punk. So I'm yes. like, well, I better fucking listen to this. Okay. Well, what did you think? What were your thoughts on, on a mic? Um, I'm, I, I want CM Punk to be healthy. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to say that out front. Um, I also want him to be happy because I'm a fan of his work. He seems like an okay guy in person, like as long as you don't piss him off, really. Um, I'm happy that he's married and doing comics, and I anticipate listening to his Thor book, uh, reading his Thor book. That said, I think some of the stuff he was angry about was justified. Some of it was not. And I think he went about doing his business the wrong way. Not saying he's entirely at fault, but he does share some of the blame. Okay. Staph infections aren't cool. That's that is yes. And that like the physical ailments, I want him to get healthy. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I want him to get healthy. However, I think he went about leaving the wrong way. Not as wrong as we thought it was, though. Not as wrong, but it, it was still pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he he had a conversation about it, and and it's and according to him, they walked out, shook hands, whatever, um, and that was that was the final of that, right? But at, but at the same time, I I'm not going to be one of those guys that say you know we deserve an explanation because we pay your salary, whatever. No, we no, don't. No, no, Vince no. does. Vince no, does. Whatever. I, yeah, Vince does. But. I feel like maybe if it was really that bad, coming out and saying something on Raw the night after the Royal Rumble, like, hey, guys, um, got a real bad concussion last night. I lost my smile. Was basically, no, lost basically, my smile. basically my body is falling apart. And even, even make it kind of like I don't like where the authority is taking us. Like, make it kind of a work shoot. You know, they would never, know. ever in a million years do that. Mm -hmm. That is end of days WCW shit. <laughs> well, no, not really. He's telling yes. the truth. No, it, yeah, they were telling the truth in WCW too. They would grab a microphone and shoot on the uh, organization that they didn't like. Uh, no, 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 we're we're talking like you're you're talking about him coming out and doing a promo, say, hey, I I've got a concussion. I'm not going to be around uh, for a while, guys. And, and like yeah, kind of like basically. a Daniel Bryan saying, "Hey, I'm hurt. I'm not going to be around for a while, guys." Exactly. Daniel That's Bryan true, did but it. Daniel Bryan stayed with the it. company. CM Punk wanted to bail. True. Mm. True. Okay, but I mean, I think it still would have been more palatable. And WWE you can't, you can't have your employees quitting on air. That is bad for business. No, I, 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 uh, but I, I don't Batista think it would be. Did. Batista left after he quit on air. Grant, it was the storyline. Batista but... storyline quit on air and left on good terms with the company. CM mm -hmm. Punk just quit. Yeah. Right. I know. I, I still felt that it could have been handled a little bit better. I think I think on uh, both parties, it sounds like uh, it could have been handled a lot better on, on both sides. Um, but we saw we saw his last days in WWE. We, uh, we saw last, his. his no, we saw night. his last night in WWE. His last night. We saw night. his last yeah. night as a wrestler. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. I still think he'll be back. We'll see. We'll see. Eventually, I, eventually, eventually no, it it won't be for a couple of years. Yeah, but if you tell me the main event of WrestleMania 33 might not have CM Punk in it. Mm. <laughs> he'll, he'll come back as one of those part timers. You know, I, I, yeah, I'm with you. Actually, I second that completely. If you see TNA in a WWE ring, he will be on a Batista deal. He will be on a Brock Lesnar <laughs> deal. That is the only way he's going to be back. Period. Mm -hmm. And he'll be worth it by then um, because he hasn't been around and he Absolutely. was a top a top seller. Um, I and, and as far as anything else, uh, you know, yes, it's only one side of the story. 
But a lot of these stories kind of corroborate all the other stories you hear about WWE from, Mm -hmm. and I will reiterate, reiterate, from their own programming, okay? The idea that WWE pushes you through an injury, you know, or you want to come back from an injury because you don't want to lose your spot, or you Mm -hmm. want an injury so you can get a break. Miz has watch, said that on several times. Watch um, Total Divas. On the, yeah, yeah, Miz has said Nikki that. Bella. Miz has said that outright on the Jericho podcast that he wished for an injury so he could leave and do a reboot like mm-hmm. he just did. Uh, yeah. But he got the Marine. It was like great. I can leave and do a reboot, and then there you go. Um, at the same time, that kind of shows that the working through an injury thing mm-hmm. kind of doesn't matter once you have a spot. You know what I mean? Because like it's not like CM Punk could have left for a couple months to rehab and would have come back and we all would have forgotten about him. No, of course not. Mm-hmm. And he did. He, he left after WrestleMania and came back, you know. Um, now, it sounds like he was dealing with some kind of stupid stuff. I think the doctor, I, I think if anything out of this, if, if, if what Punk is saying about the doctor is true, mm-hmm. if there's any legal ramifications for doing a a a a malpractice on this guy i think it's deserved Mm -hmm. legitimately you don't you don't leave a thriving private practice to go work for a corporate outfit like wwe Mm -hmm. there is no way that he's making even close to what he was making in private practice okay so you're saying the doctor is just not that great a doctor because i'm saying the doctor was probably garbage and the wwe picked him up for cheap oh Okay. That's that's I that's my guess. Okay. Okay. I mean, unless he's like the lead WWE physician, who, who by all accounts is a good guy from what I've heard from various podcasts and everything. This guy did not sound like the lead physician. He just sounded like a scrub that was there that you know called to see if Punk was cleared, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of that sounds fishy if it's true, um, and I I would. I think anybody should, should get definitely get a second opinions uh, 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 out of that. Uh, you know, so the W and that's your thing. Like the, you know, he said about how, uh, and this has been brought up several times about how WWE does X, Y, and Z for good theater for for their medical practices, uh, for the you know the drug program for the concussion testing, etc. Um, they're going to. That's a company. That's a corporate company. Mm-hmm. Doing that. This I is was not say it's no different than the NFL. Just I think just, it sounds no, like it's just because there's a players union, yes, doesn't mean that the NFL isn't doing it for the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's all about public public perception. That's the whole reason why you have a, a public relations person is to spin bad stories and to, you know, make sure people aren't talking bad about your company. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at the entire this is this is something else. This is NFL, but look at the entire Ray Rice situation and the force that NFL has put behind trying to clean that mess up. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. He can he can play again though. Hey, wait, that's not the good thing, is it? No, no, <laughs> no. no it's, it's he can play good. again if someone signs him. But no that's why they're trying desperately to, to clean up that situation. Yeah. No one is going to sign him. Uh, from the from the chat room, Garza saying uh, he thinks the doctor is a yes man and doesn't want to change WWE's orders to book someone. I, I exactly. could be with that. A lowly uh, medical staffer doesn't want to be like the guy responsible for effing up WrestleMania. Yeah, or whatever the case may be, right? Um, so maybe he's like, uh, and, and, you know, maybe he's kind of hoping the problem goes away. Um, like, like a lot of people do with their own medical problems. Right. Uh, I, you know, either way, I, I still think it's a su- suspect with that. Um, and plus, I mean, you can't blame the medical staff for decisions from like the top brass in WWE because they don't deal with that shit. No, no, not directly at all. Not they don't deal with that shit at all. Like, like WWE see, that's, is like- the, that's the problem. That's that's a, a problem inherent in WWE. They should be. They should be dealing with that. And the medical staff's opinion should have an influence over who's getting booked and where and everything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, there shouldn't be pressure to work through injuries and so right. on and so forth. But right. that's just that's just the this culture. is this is a company culture. And yes, it's a comp and, 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 and but it's OK. You have battling things because you're like, well, it's a company culture, but it's pro wrestling. Yeah, it's pro wrestling. 
it's pro wrestling and there's a lot of old head people that have the old mentality of pro wrestling a what you know before um the they need boys. to adapt for a corporate company. How many times did Vince McMahon stay on that podcast last night with Stone Cold that we had to adapt, the television had to adapt to become a public traded company? Guess what, guys? You are never going to another Attitude Era. You are never getting all that cool stuff we got in the 90s because they're big enough and they have 20, 30 writers because they need to because they're a public company and they have to do things a different way. Um, well, you're never going to have... Think, I think we will... If okay. We ever get if we ever get true competition. Okay. What did you because think? The only reason they did that stuff in the first place was because mm-hmm. they had WCW. What do you think about uh, his comments? And this is kind of sliding into the Vince McMahon talk because I, well, both are relevant, I think, interchangeably. Uh, you know, you mentioned competition. He's saying, "Well, everybody else is competition. We don't have a direct WCW competitor, but." The NFL, the NBA, other how many other cable channels, social media, or not in social media, but other digital media is, is competition for WWE now, and they're holding their own. I mean, I, I think he's sort of right. Okay, it's it's they are kind of indirect competition, like he said, but um, <laughs> the problem is WWE is in that niche that's halfway between sports and halfway between like movie, film, television, entertainment. So he's not directly competing with all those companies, but he is partially competing with them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's it's wrestling's it's the gray area that wrestling has always fallen into. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, from to, the sh- to me, to me, oh sorry, go, no, no, go ahead. I was going to go another route here from uh, from a comment, but go ahead. I'd like you to finish the thought on this. I was going to say, to me, the competition should be where your core audience lies, because okay. I mean, I know WWE is trying to cater to. Like something, have something for everyone. But if you're like the people who watch MasterChef are not the same people who watch Monday Night Football. Right. Right. Like for the most part, for the most part, they're obviously outliers. But the people my who grandma, watch dancing. <laughs> but the my people grandma watch, watches. Po- <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but the people who watch Dancing with the Stars are not going to be the same people who watch wrestling. Like that's kind of like. Fandango begs to differ. <laughs> if he'd watch Dancing with the Stars, he knows he can't dance. But, <laughs> like, you, you really kind of have to look at, like, UFC, if they had a Monday night show, and oh. I'm shocked Dana White's never done this. If UFC put the Ultimate Fighter on Monday nights, that would be competition. That would be direct and strong competition, I believe. Especially if they put the Ultimate Fighter on Fox. If you had a network show against a uh, cable three-hour Raw, that would be an interesting competition. But right now, WWE on Monday nights, they don't have a direct competitor that has the same kind of audience that they do, except for maybe Monday Night Football. And that depends week to week based on the game. Yep. Yep, true. Um, from the chat, I want to get some comments in here. Some good, some good points here from mainstream Matt Carlins. Sorry about baseball. Well, he can't eliminate. <laughs> oh wait, 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 we moved along. Don't wow. you apologize on my behalf, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> I stand by my um, He's you saying apologize to baseball. <laughs> the WWE medical board gets credit for banning chair shots to the head, but do they wield real power, or does WWE brass just listen to their advice when it's convenient? Um, um, you that know, that happened right after Chris Canyon died. Okay. Right after Canyon died, and um, he was famous for like a lot of head trauma, and that's what like they didn't want another Chris Benoit, Chris Canyon situation happening. So that's why, like again, that's public perception. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's all reactive. It's like, well, we're going to have to do this now. Um, yeah. It's the same reason for the blood. Yep. The same um, reason. You know, I, was, I guarantee it, if Vince thought the positives outweigh the negatives mm-hmm. for uh, for bleeding for blading during a match, we would have people blading at home. Look stuff. at uh, his conversation about uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13 with Bret Hart. They had a no blood policy at the time. Mm-hmm. 
And he's he he sat there and it and it happened and and he was like he was pissed that they used blood, but it worked. Mm-hmm. So again, that, that kind point, of it it did what it needed to do it exactly got over exactly. Now was it even more effective because they hadn't had blood for a while? That's the other question. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, it was also more effective because that was a crimson mask. Yes, like they. That that was so much blood that they actually turned it black and white and made it into a shirt that said "blood from a stone." Mm-hmm. Like that is marketing one hundred and one. Yeah, I remember that. Also, it was a phenomenally wrestled match. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's of when he course. passed but, out. But that finish, yeah. that finish wouldn't have had that same impact if. Austin didn't have that one last lunge where he was pulling up and you saw the blood running down through his teeth. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That last shot, boom, instant, instant double turn. That was it, right there. And, and, and this is this is the the point here. Uh, uh, Garza and, and Matt are having a great conversation back and forth about concussions, about the medical uh, situation, um, and and he, and. He's saying like like they're they're talking about like Ziggler with concussions. How you know what would happen to him if he if he had to work through concussions and stuff? This is shortening people's careers. Obviously, we're seeing what's happening. We're seeing what's happened to people with like the Canyon and the Benoits and and this guy that just got you know that 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 just got lost and shot himself from Ohio State from the football program. Um, At the same time, though, Punk did say he refused to take the full concussion test. I uh, no, he didn't. Uh, he he did not. Run he said the, the concussion test was a joke. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's like not everyone knows all you need to know about about concussions yet. Mm-hmm. Like if it's really if you're really that serious about it, and they because the concussion thing it can affect your motor skills as well as your hand eye. Right. That's why they do both. Yeah. That's what NFL players do. That's the exact same test. But to be fair, NFL if he had a concussion, he probably wasn't responding responding in it with great uh presence of mind. Yeah, yeah, but but he but still, he took the hand-eye coordination and then he wouldn't take the other half of the test. Is running the ropes part of the test? It's motor coordination. Cuz it sounds like it wasn't. It sounds like why am I going to do this? you know, in, in front of everybody, you know? I'm pretty sure that, that motor coordination is something that, like, first you monitor the hand-eye and the ear tests and everything, but you also do a motor skills test because the NFL has a policy where they will not leave people back on the field until they perform the whole concussion test. Okay. And if it's the same one that, which I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, anyone, please. Well, if you but the problem more, was they, they were they were making him do this test, and they were telling him he was going to be on the show tonight, that night. The, if he passed the concussion test. And and they said they pretty, pretty much did. And that's the allegation, at least. Um, and uh, wait, so I wanted to get the man's comment. He says, uh, it's the misdiagnosis of injuries and handling of the drug policy. Those accusations were the most important parts of what Punk said. And he he did call out the drug policy about how it was convenient for other people and them working out the, mm-hmm. off their sec, second strike and such. And, uh, you know, a, 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 again, how is the quality of the concussion policy? You know, is it a convenient concussion policy? You know, uh, NFL maybe has stronger, uh, uh, you know, rules for this. Um so yeah, yeah, I think it was just like it, it all came to a head for him, obviously. Um, and plus, getting getting a concussion in the middle of the rumble, it's still completing it. Holy crap! Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I mean, that's well, like I mean, Taker got a concussion at Mania in his yep. match with Brock. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's no why one, the match wasn't nearly as good. That's no one has ever wrestled Brock Lesnar and not got a concussion. <laughs> Because he doesn't care, and he's a shitty wrestler. Oh no, you're confusing Aww. him with Ryback, huh? You're confusing him with Ryback. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd like to say something about Ryback real quick because Ryback responded to what CM Punk said. Oh, oh. did he? Oh yeah, my! He oh did. no! And then he told oh. me. Yeah, let's tweet. be fair. Uh, let, let's let, before you get your response. Now there was the the claims against Ryback were at basically every time CM Punk wrestled him, he got hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, CM he he. he uh, kicked Ry- Ryback kicked him in the stomach and broke his ribs. 
uh, the two or three weeks after he got out from the knee surgery where they rushed him back, that was supposed to be a four to six recovery. They put him in a TLC match on the first Raw of, of the year. Um, and Ryback missed the table, putting him through it uh, to the point where Punk was asking, are you an idiot or are you trying to hurt me f- for real? Ryback, missed tell the me, table. Tell me which it is. But you tell me that Ryback has responded. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he said, he said a few things and like he does, he tweets things and then deletes them. Um, and he, he referred to punk as uh, fragile and, uh, emotional or something like that. Um, and, uh, uh, he said that, um, he'll continue to bust his ass and he said he'll continue to work hurt and push through injuries and things like that. And, I know he was saying that stuff uh, to sound tough and awesome, but he really just kind of sounds like a moron. You shouldn't have to work through injuries. You're only impressing the the people who you're uh, next to there in the WWE. You know what I mean? Yeah. To to anybody with a brain, you just sound like an idiot. Oh, my leg's broken. Okay, well, I'll just continue to work on it. No. You fucking moron. Sit the fuck down. Nobody wants to see you hobbling around the ring and hurting people. Take a break. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes it worse and it shortens careers. It's bullshit and it's frustrating. And like I said, it's part of the culture in, uh, in WWE and well, I, I want to say WWE. I, I can't speak for professional wrestling as a whole, but, um, you know, there's that feeling where, well, I've got to work through my injury and I got to stay on TV and I got to keep whatever momentum I have. Um, and the thing is, the only person that that actually benefits is the higher ups in the company and the writers, because uh, if a person leaves and then comes back, then that's more difficulty and that's more onus on the writers to come up with something interesting to get them over and, you know, put them back into the public eye as opposed to taking some time off or no, I'm sorry. It's, it's harder for them. It's harder for the writers when a wrestler goes away and comes back because they have to rebuild that momentum, but it's better for the wrestler, the health of the wrestler. Mm-hmm. I think, I think that would depend on the wrestler. Yeah. It's better. It's better in the long run for them to like be healthy. I would like to see us like a staggered seasonal, thing happen with wrestlers i would be mm-hmm. thrilled with that like yeah. f- like i think it'll help guys that are being stale again vince was talking about certain guys like brock lesnar um not being on every week because it's not gonna last mm-hmm. you know um and and then you have so really uh so having rusev kick everybody in the face every week is the right thing to do and sometimes three times a week with how many shows you're running you know, mm-hmm. um, I don't. Where, whereas, whereas uh, in that interview, uh, Vince was really trying to establish that he's not out of touch. I think it showed how out of touch he is. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, I think I think the interview with Vince did a lot for him. And I know it wasn't originally scheduled as a response to CM Punk and his allegations. Uh, I don't think uh, it was. It, 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 well, it absolutely was not. It absolutely yeah. was not. It was scheduled two weeks ago before this even came out, unless they heard during, something nobody during else During the did. pay-per-view. During the pay-per-view, right? Um, but it did do a lot to definitely humanize Vince, um, and it did put him in a lot better light than if we just sat there pontificating Vince in response to CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's a few things. Uh, when he talked about what people need to do to get over and keep in touch with fans and, and everything like that, that I think, I think that people disconnect with that. Like, I don't get why, like, we're like, why isn't Cesaro doing something? And he says, well, there's a problem with Cesaro. He's not connecting with fans and he's missing something, but he'll figure it out. It's like, mm-hmm. really, I, really? He hasn't done, you know, yeah. um, but and he kept insisting we listen to the fans, we listen to them, you know, uh, you know, we listen there if they're over, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I they 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 pulled the veil up on a lot of stuff, but I'm not sure if it was enough of it. 
But um, anyways, uh, definitely let us know your thoughts, guys, on the CM Punk uh, interview on the Stone Cold podcast. But you got one more thing? Sword. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I just looked up the concussion policy. Oh, yeah. Me. I'm sorry. I wanted to mention this. Yeah. Matt, uh, actually, yeah. mainstream Matt, actually, wait, wait, who, did you post this or did Matt? No, Matt posted, but I looked up to where I was going to say the same thing. That he he did. Yeah, he did put the impact uh, uh, policy in the chat room and you looked it up too. Uh, can you kind of give us a summary? Uh, what? Yeah, it's um, it's called the impact test. Yes. It what stands for. Immediate... That means that means oh. they just have to watch TNA. <laughs> <laughs> if you like it, you have a concussion. Yeah, it, you involves, have a concussion. <laughs> it involves watching TNA and bouncing your head off the wall. God, I've, I've if you if you stuff. recognize Dixie Carter and you like her, you might have a concussion. All right, but it's it's called uh, immediate post concussion assessment and cognitive testing, and um, what it does it measures um, your memory, your uh, cognitive function, your concentration, and your balance, which is I think what the running the ropes thing is. They okay. said the process takes about eight to twelve minutes to uh at least during the during a football game the process takes about uh, 8 to 12 minutes and then they check on you after that because the worst thing about concussions is if you get into a concussion shortly thereafter the first one uh interesting so. note here uh a little bit of regional news here uh impact results are evaluated by Dr. Mark Lavelle neuro neuropsychologist and director of the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center Sports Medicine Concussion Program right here in Pittsburgh, huh. mm -hmm. so uh, you uh, you find out a lot. A lot of the good uh, sports doctors end up here in Pittsburgh. So, um, so yeah, uh, there you go. Some more about the doctor. Yeah, the Mac hold on a second. Hold on a second. What is this? WWE doctor goes in depth on diagnosing and treating concussions, and this was posted in June twenty sixth, uh, twenty thirteen. I believe this is the doctor that. CM Punk uh, discusses on his podcast. Uh, we will. I'm going to put this out. Uh, uh, I'm going to put this out right now on the tweets and the Facebook and the Google Plus. So if you guys want to check that out in hindsight, um, and uh, if you guys have any more thoughts on that, please hit us up. Definitely on Twitter. Definitely in the in the uh, uh, Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm, I'm sure we got a lot of stuff to talk about here. Great discussions happening in the chat room tonight. Uh, I, it's uh, you know everybody's got their opinion. Everybody's trying to piece this together. Um, and there's a lot to chew on. There's a, we we have over three hours of podcast interviews to chew on between Vince and CM Punk. And there's more coming. CM Punk's doing a Q and A podcast mm -hmm. on everybody's response. I can't wait for that, especially after Vince. You know, I think that's. Uh, I think that's this. Oh, uh, we do need to point out that Austin did ask Vince if he wants to talk about CM Punk. Yes. Which I I loved that Austin did bring that up. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing Vince would really say is that he was sorry for um, Punk getting the notification of his termination on his wedding day. Yes. Yes. He blamed it on like the miscommunication between uh, you know, his section and the lawyers and et cetera. And that's like where it ended up. Yeah. Ouch. Um, it's a big company. Who, it is. Who? Uh, follow follow up thought. Who checks their mail on their wedding day? Uh, like uh, <laughs> delivered. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah I, that I, is I, I, I like Atlanta, some Atlanta sports set. Like, you, like me, you got yeah, FedExed and wedding, signed yeah. off <laughs> and everything like that. So. Bobby knows. Like okay. All right. We'll be right back, guys. Go check out PittsburghWrestling.com for some great <laughs> stuff. Uh, follow follow Sorgatron Media, whether you're on Facebook, Google Plus, or Twitter. Uh, we are doing something fun. We're doing what? the Sorgatron Media Advent Calendar. <gasps> that started on my birthday. Well, we forgot to start it on your birthday, Aww. but we started it today, so we're a little late. Uh, but we started it uh, today. If you're listening to the podcast today... Tuesday, December 2nd, uh, you still have time to go on PittsburghWrestling.com with the code ADVENT2 to get, start with two. <laughs> to get best of IWC uh, 2013 for $2. On the second day of Christmas, Sora Tri Media gave to me. No. 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 If you can make it work, <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, and of course, we'll have something every day leading up to Christmas. You'll have a sale on a digital download from IWC VOW. That's Vicious Outcast Wrestling uh, and uh, uh, RWA Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Of course, some people got prizes for that earlier with the WMS Thanksgiving hashtag. Woo. Whoa. Woo. No, why, why are we wooing? I don't know. Oh. Uh, he started it. But in the meantime, and we got great stuff coming up. Uh, RWA, IWC shows coming up in the next uh, uh, two weekends, and those will be out shortly on digital download and DVD. And uh, uh, thanks to everybody who participated in the Black Friday sales uh, over the weekend. Some people uh, uh, cleaned up on those. I, I saw somebody, I think he did about a year and a half worth of IWC shows with the discount code we had floating around there. That was, that was, that was awesome to see people jumping on that. Um, so uh, uh, great stuff. Uh, PittsburghWrestling.com, all that stuff. Plus uh, stuff like finding Zach Gowan. Zach Gowan actually on Boss Battle this evening talking about yep. uh, video games. So thanks for that. Uh, at Zach Gowan on the Twitter. But finding Zach Gowan, the digital downloads on there, DVD over at ZachGowan.com. And uh, so in the meantime, we'll be right back with Remember When. This is Johnny Gargano, the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas, and the whole shebang. Not Johnny Bananas, by the way, even though I like to eat them. And you're watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And this is the part where we like to remember when. Hmm. The uh, song. 404 not found <laughs> song 404 not found song 404 not found song 404 not found why do you Remember sound like a dalek <laughs> why do you sound like a dalek <laughs> um, this is the remember when segment of the show we like to look back at <laughs> things in wrestling are you okay over there um, I'm sorry, oh, sometimes oh, I'll be oh, it's too funny and I almost get lightheaded and I almost oh, pass out. Oh, you know. It happened last Sunday, too. We we have, as you can hear there, uh, oh, me the giggles. our friend of the mainstream media, Matt Carlos, joining us, mainstream Matt on the Twitters. And we also have the Riz at the E Riz on the Twitters joining us as well, both from the Pittsburgh area. Gonna, gonna pitch in on this sorry. Remember When in this week. Hi, guys. Uh, hi. Hey, cheap, cheap plug, Sorg, since you're mentioning myself and the Riz at the same time, you know, the Riz and I will be involved in a momentous occasion a little bit later this week. Oh? <clears throat> yes. It's going to be the first ever Inferno match in wrestling game show history. Damn sure it is! I've, Mad I've Mike pulled. is holding the matches and the can of gasoline. The I've, Riz I've and pulled. I have not been told what the rules are yet. <laughs> I've told this you numerous times that I'm not setting myself on Some... fire. Somebody, and I will, I will respond, Riz. Then you better fucking win. Somebody's gonna shoot your, their eye out. Uh, okay, so that's the thing. So, so, anyways, uh, remember when? Uh, looking back, of course, we talked about the So Cold interview, the uh, with Vince McMahon, of course, the CM Punk interview on Colt Cabana. Uh, now Colt Cabana needs to get on Stone Cold's show and get interviewed. And just, he's already been on yeah. there, I think. Uh, probably. I think they've already interviewed each other. I think I think they've been on each other's shows, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. This could get awkward. Hmm. Anyways, uh, so look back. Like, what are your favorite interviews in wrestling? And this can be the whole scope of things. We discussed the rules here before the show. Uh, kick back off here on the recording. Uh, so so who's got the first one? What's your favorite r- interview? Uh, Mike, uh, you're dancing over there. I have one, Sorg, and I'm going to say it before anyone else does. Jim Ross interviewing Mick Foley. You talking about the uh, like the flashback to the old dude love and everything? Yes. The no entire, one was going to say that. The entire thing where uh, it was like a, I think it was a two or three part interview that lasted over several weeks, and Foley went into like creating the dude love character and how that's who he wanted to be in professional wrestling, but he realized he was just never going to be that, and then he ended up attacking Jim Ross with the mandible claw. And it was so original for WWE at the time. It put over the Mankind character like crazy. And it also gave us dude love, which is just fantastic. Which parlayed to the multiple personalities in general. Yeah, the Three Faces of Foley promo is maybe legit one of my, one of my favorite segments. I'll second that one. Ever. 
definitely. Um, LB, I think you were going to say something. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, the uh, the after the SummerSlam, the post SummerSlam, where Vince McMahon was like, "Brett screwed Brett," and I'm going to tell you why. Survivor and Series. Survivor Series. Yeah, whatever. This is not my favorite. Um, but it is my most memorable. I have never seen the interview all the way through, but they have played that motherfucking clip over and over and over and over in my time as a wrestling fan uh, to put Vince McMahon over as a heel. Uh, just him saying, Brett screwed Brett, Brett screwed Brett. I can, I can describe the scene perfectly, the weird Charlie Rose background, the beige coat that Vince McMahon <laughs> is wearing, and his poofy, <laughs> fucked up hair. It is ingrained in here, which is fucked up because I've never seen it. Wow. The makeup on the makeup covering the black eye. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. From the chat, because I, I, I want to get these before they they move up and I lose them. Uh, Garza seconds the Brett screwed Brett. And uh, Alex Carr says his favorite interview is the freight train shoot interview so because bitch. smooth belly. I'm sorry, did you just get stolen from the chat room? Oh, sword. no. I'm sorry. Sword. I'm so Nobody sorry. Safe. I'm so sorry. Can you see what I'm wearing right now? No, I can't see what you're wearing, He's actually. Wearing a freight train shirt. You're I'm behind the logo. Train it's behind, train it's behind the logo. Well, I can't freight, say freight train anymore. He's wearing his freight train shirt on a smooth belly. I'm, on a smooth I'm belly. I'm wearing my freight train shirt on my smooth belly. On my so. smooth belly. Um, <laughs> it's okay, Riz. I'm sure there's a Kali interview you can pick up. Freight trains oh, are champions. No, no, you know, I'm, I'm going to go probably uh, hate myself for this, but... Uh, TNA? It's DNA. After, no, 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 no. After, uh, I forget which show it was. Somebody had the bright idea to put a camera in my face. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody else had the bright idea to go interview <laughs> Dalton Castle in RJ City. And the tables turned very quickly when I was, you know... And I didn't say anything. Those guys are, are took over the show, took over the interview, and I just that, that's just one of the memorable moments for me because I'm just you, sitting there. And, and like, you drew oh, a crowd. I drew a crowd. I drew a crowd, sir. You no. weren't you, you weren't even there until the crowd started brewing around me. <laughs> I finished my work and I say, "Oh, what's happening over here?" And it was Riz. It was and me this situation. getting interviewed. Yeah, getting interviewed by RJC and Dalton Castle. So your favorite interview in wrestling is effort. my is my <laughs> interview. No. Yes. No ego at all on that one. That's okay. weird. No, no, none, none. none. By the way, uh, oh, Ford, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ford. Where did you work for again? Yeah, I work for, I work for, <laughs> <laughs> I work for WWE. Uh, uh, Sorg, I, I, I want to get this in before before it goes away. Hot Wheels' favorite interview is Puppet. Oh, oh Puppet. No. We, we do I, not speak of his name. I wasn't here for that, and I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you call me that? This is derogatory. Bobby, what's your favorite oh, interview? Um, <laughs> my, my favorite interview is... Uh, the first time CM Punk was on the Nerdist podcast, uh, because um, mm. Chris Hardwick going into it didn't know anything about wrestling. He didn't, you know, and here was CM Punk showing up, and they were talking comics, and just it it, it basically opened the door for other wrestlers to be on the Nerdist podcast. Red like Mick Foley appeared, Jericho appeared. I love open the door. But yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's mine. CM Punk on the on the Nerds podcast. Yeah, first time. And the second time he was on telling the uh, the mile marathon story. The sixteenth mile. Good stuff. Wow. Uh Matt Carlins, what about you? Um very much like Riz, my favorite interviews wow. are the ones that what the I hell did. What's going on in your background? <laughs> yeah, what's happening in there? Is Jen? Is Jen like freaking out? Of the scene. Again? Just, just come back to me. Come back to me. I, I forgot what I was going to say. So okay. somebody's going to get their ass kicked. Uh, wow! <laughs> somebody's going to get their ass broke. They have to call the cops on that one. Um, <laughs> my favorite, actually, more recently, uh, Chris Jericho was actually on Kevin Smith's podcast. 
Oh yeah, that was really good. That was really good. They, they talked about really mostly. Good. They talked about know. Canada and hockey. I didn't so, know that. So that that was fun. It, it was recent. It's only in the last couple months. I think it was on on Smodcast, right? Um, oh no, wait. It was the other way around. Smith, Kevin Smith was on Jericho. You're podcast. right. I don't know. Oh, okay. They recorded it in his place. It was Kevin Smith. It just felt like a Kevin Smith podcast. I listened to both. Um, but but I do remember how they connected because apparently uh, 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 Kevin was out walking and Jericho, <laughs> yes. yeah, and Jericho just pulls up and says, hey, it's Chris Jericho. Where do you live? <laughs> and, and random because Kevin Smith is walking. You know, if I do something like that, the cops get called. But hey, well, Jericho this is this is like Hollywood, though. This is like L.A., where people like Kevin Smith live. So, um, but no, it was it was a fun interview. And he couldn't possibly be a bad person. He's a celebrity. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Matt Carlin's are are you are you in the clear over there? Yeah, I'm in the clear. I got the green light. It's you okay. got the green light. You're good. Okay. Yeah. My my favorite interview, like Riz, is the ones I did myself. But I'm not the type to name drop. Um, so I'll try to do something useful. Um. I do really enjoy um, the Steve Austin podcast, and I think my favorite um, Steve Austin podcast is essentially one where he interviews himself, and it's kind of one of the reasons that I started wanting to do the watch parties that we've been doing lately. And Steve Austin, there's a Steve Austin podcast where he pro- provides uh, his own commentary for the WrestleMania 17 main event with The Rock, and it's oh, yeah, amazing that. as he basically – gives like a master class on different ways that you make a cover during a wrestling match and what it means when you do a cover fast and you do a cover slow and then then I'm over him this way and then I walked over that way. Like all these just little things, you know, all this acquired knowledge over just like however many years of of uh of wrestling and God knows how many matches. It's just amazing to hear you know, the the cool thing about Austin is like he's so forthcoming with what he knows at this point. Um, it gets really interesting. He actually lets you get inside his head. It's awesome. If anyone hasn't watched it, you should definitely sync up your network and listen to that podcast. Awesome. Did we miss anybody? There's a lot of us in here. I think we got everybody, right? Um, I, I'd like to give an honorable mention to okay. our very own LB interviewing Kurt Angle. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that happened. Uh, Thanks. That, that, was, that was really good. Speaking of LB, has anybody mentioned that he looks like IRS? <laughs> I would have to. Uh, I would have to slick my hair back a little bit more than I, it is. I said he looked yeah. like. I look like Mad Men. Wow. Um, I, got the, yeah, I, I, would, I have one more honorable honorable mention. Okay. Is um the time that uh, Vader knocked out that uh, interviewer over in uh, the Middle East? <laughs> hey, like um, wait. That was awesome. There's an honorable mention from Gars in the chat room for our t- uh, uh, hashtag. Uh, Ask this. Ask Dixie. Oh, oh. DNA. oh how about? Harder. Oh, I got. I got an honorable mention too. How about John Stossel getting slapped by somebody? I can't remember who it was, but he got slapped by somebody in WWE like a long time ago. Hmm? I think Vader <laughs> might have fake. I don't think it was Vader. I don't think it was Vader. Yeah. It wasn't Jim, WWE. It wasn't how about WWE. Jim Ross interviewing no, Kane? Kane yeah, Kane setting uh, Mountain himself, Dew on him and setting him on fire. fire. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all, all, all the memorable JR spots, let's be real here, is when he gets injured, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Or, More or less. Or kicks, yeah. in the ball, kicks in the balls, sets on fire, mandible claw. <sighs> he can't catch a break. <laughs> Guys, please let us know or remember when on uh, the Twitters, uh, what you what you remember when is your favorite interviews over the years. In the meantime, if you want to support the show, and get some clothes on your back. Go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. So much great stuff over there. We got our shirts. Over, and there's, I love every time I see Riz in that crazy outfit with the bows and everything. Uh, good times at WrestlingMamShow.com. Property of Mayhem. Wrestling Mayhem Show logo. And while you're over there, there's so much going on at Pro Wrestling Tees. CM Punk is there. Because he needs money. He heard we were getting a good deal, and he's like, "I want to get in on a wrestling." Yes, he is. Everybody, like everybody that you would want in pro wrestling, is basically here. You can get uh, some pretty cool stuff with him. The pipe bomb promo one, uh, as well as I know this is LB's favorite CM Punk. Well, welcome to Chicago, motherfucker. 
Yeah, CM Punk loves motherfucker cast. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, he does. Stone Cold Steve Austin is there. Macho Man Randy Savage is there. A lot of good stuff there from Pro Wrestling Tees uh, to represent your favorite wrestlers. And uh, and stick it to the man, and none of that money goes to WWE. How about that? Yeah, save the Matt Empire. Man. There you go. Stick it to the man. Support the independents. Damn the man. Save you know, the independent wrestlers like Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> CM Punk. And CM Punk. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Show you it is. It is showing your support. Independent wrestlers though. like Gold Dust. If you are on, if you are on Team CM Punk in this whole situation, show me care. Go over there. Go check it out. T- make yo know, stop calling them a quieter on Twitter, and go <laughs> go buy a shirt. And while you're there, pick up a Wrestling Mayhem Show shirt in there. You know. Maybe he'll get that little invoice. We're, we're like, not, oh, oh, somebody, somebody uh, bought my "Welcome to Chicago, motherfucker" shirt and something called "Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show." Good times, good times. I wonder what that's maybe about. Maybe he'll be on the show, and, and maybe uh, he'll be on the show to cl- to grammar slam all of us. Confirmed. CM Punk returns to Wrestling Mayhem Show 2015. Confirmed. 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 Are we a dirt sheet now? Yes. Hey guys, there's lots of news. I want to get some of your thoughts on it here real quick before we get out of here. Of course, the biggest news of the week. Sorg, I know what this is. The biggest news of the week. John Sorg. Stossel You're was slapped n- by David. But Mike Tanay is out of TNA. No, that is not the biggest news of the week. The biggest news of the week is Flintstones WWE movie trailer. What? I still think Mike Tanay is bigger. Nope. If it's I'm totally <laughs> as good as the uh, Scooby Doo movie, it's going to be amazing. Yes, yes. I'm excited. And, and 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 LB, I hope you're ready for rock puns. <sighs> CM Rock is oh, there. Yeah, I, I I have a problem with the trailer. Okay, what's your problem with the trailer? They didn't even try with some of the names. What? They didn't even try. Sorg. They did not even. What try. do you have a problem with, my, Mad Mike? John Cena Rock or John Cena Stone? That's not even trying. What are you gonna do with John Cena? There, there are ways to do it. Okay. His name even... sucks. You can't do anything with it. And and the Undertaker is literally just called the Undertaker. They don't have to change anything. That's should, not should... trying because the Undertaker does not sell. They to could have Fred called him Rock Cena, but that would have been very confusing. <laughs> yes. The Underslater. The Underslater. There you go. Yeah, Slater. The Boulder and now Twins. I'm with he's Slater. Mr. McMagma. John Seaman. How about Daniel, John Seaman? Uh, Daniel Bryrock. That's, that's Seaman. I think Undertaker just, just translates. Uh, well, I'm excited for this. Uh, and The Rock isn't even in it. I mean, what more could they do here? We're like, Hannah Barbera's got this cook up with WWE films right now. Like, could we see a WWE meets the Flintstones? Or not the Flintstones, I, the Jetsons? I oh, want to see Santino meets Jabberjaw. Oh. I could get down with uh, Wacky Races. Um, yeah, I was going to say WWE the Wacky Races. There you go. Wacky races. Awesome. There you go. You do a Crush I mean, Hour Wacky got, Races. They've already got Slam City and, and Crush Hour. And, That's right. Uh, I love Wacky Races. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Funny. Hey, right. boo boo. Who's coming up the top rope? I, right? I forgot Wacky Race. I forget that it exists from time to time, and then I remember and I get real excited. <laughs> and it I just hate, happened. I hate bringing this back to CM Punk. Sorry. But if WWE did a Wacky Races, CM Punk, when he was first on the Cole Cabana podcast, the first one, he talked Are about. Who's going? making noises? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's making Why noises? Come on. Let him talk. Wacky Races. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, th- I'm, I'm just saying, like, Cannonball Run was the live action version of Wacky Races, and CM Punk on his first interview with Cole Cabana said that he pitched an idea to do WWE Cannonball Run. So, if we did that, I mean, it, I, I'm not surprised. It's right there. It's like, it really is. You don't even have to write a script. Just put them in their cars and start filming. Just go. Yep. I want, Wacky I want... Races never had a script. I the want... only person who had dialogue was Dick Dastardly. <laughs> I want... No, I want... Wacky, wait, wait, wait. Had... Wacky Races had a script. One line for every episode. Dick Dastardly loses. I want Lunchbox to do the Motley laugh. 
<laughs> that made me. That, made, that tickled my heart. It tickled made, my heart. Made my heart smile. I didn't even know I could do that. <laughs> and now you know, and knowing half the battle. Oh wait, that's here's, here's a fun thing that'll freak your mind. Uh, Dick Dastardly, I'm fairly certain, had the same voice actor, or was at least a cousin of uh, Gargamel. Whoa! Yeah. Same yeah. voice, well, same that's... voice, same weird fucked same up exact nose. Voice. Well, that, that was also quest for immortality. That was also a Hanna Barbera cartoon. Could we see WWE in the Smurfs? Snorks. Oh Snorks. Oh my god! WWE Snorks. Uh, Theme Smurf. Let's WWE keep this Snorks. going. It's nothing like the Smurfs. How about just, Yogi no, Bear? It's totally different. They're underwater. Nope. Nope. Hey, All right, Uber moving Uber on, Uber. guys. Guys, most of us here, we have the WWE Network. We've been enjoying wrestling. All the wrestling we can eat from WWE and everybody else they buy. We can eat. We can uh, eat wrestling. Now, how many of you guys want to eat sushi? I, I do. I love, I love sushi. How many I of you? LB, LB, are you ready for a monthly, a monthly smorgasbord of wrestling sushi? What? Wow, this just got real. Well, let him answer. Never, let him answer. Exactly I've never wrestled going. sushi before. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it looks like New Japan Wrestling has announced a streaming service, and with it, their intent to compete with the WWE uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling World, which is going for 999 yen. Is that that amusement park? It was like no. $8. So, <laughs> apparently, because I read well, Japanese... Uh, this is this is their their play against the WWE network. Uh, the nine ninety nine yen uh, works out to about eight forty US, so it's actually a little <laughs> bit cheaper. What a eight forty doesn't have the same ring. Nine ninety nine. They still got nine ninety nine yen. They can still chant nine ninety nine or whatever is Japanese for that. Um, people are dumb. What? Wow. People, people are dumb, and they won't know the conversion rate. I'm gonna wait for them to do the free month right. preview for everybody in about nine months, and then I'm gonna try it out. I think. There you go, there you go. Um, there's actually a uh, somebody posted on our board the instructions to sign up because the site is in Japanese. It's true. What do you guys think about this New Step Japan one, Pro Wrestling? I, I don't think anybody here Wait. really. We need Michael. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't think anybody here really, really watches a lot of New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think Eamon watches a bit, you know, uh, with the indie stuff. But are you excited about the idea about the uh, arguably the other big company in the world uh, competing in a streaming service here? I am so excited. I don't even need to understand Japanese because New Japan speaks a language we all understand the language of violence. Rainmaker! Okada Tanahashi Bullet Club. It's badass. I, I, I don't watch nearly as much as I wish I did, but it rules. I know enough to know that it rules. This could be a chance. This could be a chance. And now let's uh, let's move to some lesser news. Mike well, today. Wait, we, need, we need Michael Coulson to help us install it. <laughs> Network, show us how to do it. Well, Japanese B- Bella Twins to do a yeah. stewardess promo. Mm-hmm. Where's Eamon? He would know who the Japanese Bella Twins are. Yeah, of course well, he would. It's or, he would or he would uh, shame us for comparing Japanese wrestlers I, I to I want to be twins. hearing it later on the Indie Mayhem show, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> speaking the of twins which, from Austin Powers. Speaking I'm of which, sure the Japanese Bella what, Twins... Fu- me and Fuku. Fu- yeah, awesome. Hold on, exactly. guys, guys, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's too many people trying to say Japanese names. Okay. <laughs> Turning Japanese, time. I think we're turning Never Japanese. Seen. I really think, think you would so. say that on the seriously. Uh, Mike today is being replaced by Josh Matthews at Impact Wrestling. He's just doing um, his job, sort of. I like I, that there's a new voice over there. I I I don't want to say that I caused this because I said I missed Mike today. <laughs> but I think I caused this because I said I missed Mike today. Oh no! I, and, I'm, and I'm sorry, Mike today. I miss your weird face, and I will probably never get to see it again. And I apologize greatly for this. That being said, hi, Josh Matthews. I enjoy your commentary style. Please make sure Taz doesn't be sexist. Yeah, good luck. (laughs) (laughs) All right. 
What when tomato is, is, tomato oh, is Taz Matthews? talking? He's probably being sexist. What a tomato yeah. that Josh Matthews is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, ah, he's from Brooklyn. That's how they talk to women. Um. Anyways, uh, guys, let no, me know. No, it isn't. What did no, you th- What did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, oh, I got, I got one. I got one. Yes, I got one. I learned that you can be positive about Monday Night Raw, and everybody else is complaining about it in twi- on Twitter, and we had a great time watching it because we were all positive. I don't know about you guys, but it was a great birthday celebration. It was and good. I, I want to thank you guys because it was fun. It wasn't as draining as it usually is. Yeah, it wasn't. So really kept with it. Awesome. What about you, Mad Mike? I learned that Jimmy Uso does not want his wife to be in Hollywood. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. A little he he doesn't. Like, Miz didn't do anything creepy. He just said, hey, I saw your video. I enjoyed it. Here's a card for my agent. Oh Jesus Christ! Help me out. What video? Um, you need to watch Total Divas. Yeah, I only watch Monday Night Raw. I have no idea what he's talking about. Here's the detachment that happens. Naomi did a video where it's a lot of butt shaking. It's a porn. Um, basically, what I did when the video came out was I did a YouTube split, and I put Naomi's video on mute, and I played the Rikishi song, put a little ass on it. And it synced up really well. <laughs> was she wearing the taxi cab socks whenever she was doing this, Mike? Um, I believe that was before the taxi cab socks were implemented, but she is wearing similar outfits. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Um, uh, LB, what would you learn from wrestling this week? I don't know. That was gross. Uh... <laughs> uh fucking no podcasting podcasting is still a viable medium and <laughs> lots of people will tune in uh to for it if you're friends with cm punk or or stone cold sure or stone cold sure, sure yeah or 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 cool cabana yeah yeah mm-hmm. a little bit a little mm-hmm. bit i learned that we now worry about anytime we see a lump on somebody's back in pro wrestling <laughs> staff infection <laughs> Apparently, oh, you, you guys know something on on Kane's back. I don't know. You guys had better better feeds than I did for wrestling. He's, um, had, he's had that for probably weeks now. Yeah. It's also, we learn it's not a tuma. It's a staph infection. It's not I, a tuma. I is Jacob Goodnight? Hmm. Hmm. Riz, what you learn? Well, I learned. Um, I'm probably. I learned that I'm probably the only one who enjoys a new day. Oh, you're not. No, I like it. Like, I like the new day. It it's one of those new I, I I it's one of those stables that actually work well together. Uh, there's smart and speed, smart and power, power and speed, power and smart. You know, just that, that little mesh between and every move, every double team move is something different. And I like oh my that. god! Is the new day just a live action version of Supercard? I hope so. They rotate in and out when they had to adjust for speed and power. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Matt Carlin, so what did you learn from wrestling this week? Well, Sorg, I learned that uh, you know, despite what we may think about Vince McMahon. He's actually kind of an introvert and and kind of a shy person uh, deep down. Um, he's just a shy guy, and and sometimes when he's at a party, um, you know, he gets a little bit nervous, you know, talking to other people. You know, he's just a shy person. You know, you know, don't get caught up in this big You know, that's that's uh, that's just you know, he's just a shy wow, kind of person. You know, I'll tell you what I, know I the did feeling. learn this. What? I know the feeling. I know the yeah. feeling when I'm not here with a microphone in front of me, and all you guys are not actually in the room with me. Or, you know, you know, uh, when I'm actually in the room with you guys, I'm a complete introvert. Know the feeling. There is some truth to that. Yeah, I know. The, I know the feels. The feels. Anyways, you had another part. I'll tell you what I didn't learn this week. I didn't learn the rules to the Dag Gum Inferno match. Still leaving me hanging. I'm uh-huh. the champ. I want to know. No, there there will be no championship advantage in the Inferno match. Just remember to bring lighters. 
You know, I got say, worried because I saw a promo for IWC where it looks like there's going to be an Inferno match, uh, unconfirmed. And uh, I, I feel bad for Chachi who has to film ringside. Chachi should just oh. shave his eyebrows now. How bad of an idea is it to do a, an indie Inferno match? Oh, really bad. About I'm as sure bad as fine. an idea as it is to do a non-indie Inferno match. Judging by <laughs> how safe the cage match looked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you and you saw one of the better ones too. Yeah, they need they need to call they need to call the show Indie Inferno. Um, I, I, there's also the, the the idea that's been floating around for a while of a buried alive match in indie wrestling. Oh, I thought that happened in RWA. Uh, well, that that can be done. There was speculation, I think, but it, it didn't actually happen. Somebody has the setup. Set up. Whatever that means. Guys, I've had a lot of fun talking about uh, pro sorry, wrestling with you guys. Room. What? Chat chat room. Oh, I'm sorry. Chat room. What's going on in the chat room? Uh, people learn things. I didn't think they did. Oh, people wow. learn things. Um, wow. Tony Garza learned that WWE has really shitty doctors, and those damn millennials have no ambition. Uh, learn Vince thinks his roster sucks. Yeah, he really called out the roster on that one. Like, yeah, maybe we do do it better if you guys weren't shitty, uh, uh, millennials. Cars learn learn Cesaro is Swiss. (laughs) You'd you'd never know that. Uh, What are you talking Um, about? (laughs) Wow. Anyways, on that point, thank you everybody for joining us. Talking wrestling with us. Join in the chat room all night long. Thank you, Matt Carlins. Uh, no, hey, thank you, Matt Carlins, but also well, thank, thank you, Mike you. Allen, I was actually well, getting well. to for our notes and tweets all night long. Um, <laughs> you can join us, of course, at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or YouTube, wherever you want to consume us. You can also drop a line to Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> Shocked us all out of it. Yeah, we were just stopped on that one. We're like, wait, we're getting Eden Sorg? Consume. You can also drop us a line to 412 206 WMS0. Inject me. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. Look for Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google, including the Facebook uh, uh, the great group that we have going on there. Please support us on uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS or Patreon dot com slash wrestling mayhem show and we'll see you guys next time check out all the other shows raw wrap up uh the midweek wars and wrestling uh game show as well as the indie mayhem show we'll see you guys next week mayhem is out This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more.